Ladies and gentlemen, coming straight to you from the incisive media studio in London. It's now time to recognize all the finalists and honor our winners as we welcome you to the Women in Insurance Awards for 2020. Please welcome to the floor your host for the awards, Head of Business Development, it's Katie Pierce. Hello and welcome everyone to the second ever Women in Insurance Awards and the first ever Virtual Women in Insurance Awards. These awards celebrate the achievements of women working within the UK insurance sector. Those who attended last year's Glitzy Affair at the Royal Lancaster will remember why these awards are so important. And I believe after the year we've all had and the unique challenges everyone has faced, it's important to showcase the great stories, especially those of how women across the sector have led the response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Many women have been faced with a unique and unforeseen set of challenges, working from home, balancing work and home life, becoming teachers alongside coping with your day-to-day -day family stresses while continuing to make contributions to their business. These awards are not about men versus women or whether a particular gender is more suited to a career or role in insurance. They're simply about recognising the achievements of women in the sector where they continue to be underrepresented. This year's awards are of course very different from last year. 12 months ago, more than 600 of us met for a three course meal in a swanky London hotel dressed to the nines in suits and floor length dresses. I'm sure I speak for many of you when I say it's been a while since I've been in a long dress with a champagne flute in my hand. Life certainly looks very different now, but despite the challenges the coronavirus has thrown at us, we at Incisive Media and our excellent panel of judges have assessed 120 women representing 90 firms, culminating in a virtual judging session just over a month ago. From more than 460 entries, we've produced 22 shortlists made up of finalists for the awards today. A big well done to everybody who made the shortlist and of course to our winners. Please take a look at what our wonderful judges thought of our entries. Dennis Mahoney, uh, a long-term veteran of the insurance industry. Kalpna Shah, Chair of Riverstone Managing Agency. Barbara Schoenhofer, I'm the founder and chair of ISC Group. Andrew Sellers. Rosemary Beaver. I'm Paul Bidjoen. Tally Schlommer. Karen Grave. Terry Chen. I'm, I'm Mark Gagan. <laughs> Pam Quinn. Martin Friel. Vicky Carter. Matt Andrews. I'm delighted to be judging the awards again this year because by nurturing and celebrating diverse talents, I want to play my part in making our industry a really attractive destination for any talented professional. During my many years, I've witnessed some of the struggles that uh, women have had to go through in order to make the progress that they so much, so greatly deserve. It's really important for me to not only celebrate the diversity of our fantastic nominees, but also to ensure that this diversity is truly represented and recognised throughout the process. I'm thrilled as um, last year's winner to come back to judge these awards. Um, it's tremendous to see so many talented women across such a diverse sector. We need to celebrate success of all women in such a male-dominated industry. We need to recognise the achievement of these proactive leaders and influencers. It's a wonderful opportunity to profile the heroines and talent and just sheer guts of so many women at all levels in our profession and our industry. And it's just great to have um, an award ceremony that enables women to be bold enough to put themselves forward and to um, take the place that they really uh, earn and deserve. I 
First of all, celebrating achievements and progress that we've made. It's so important to recognize um, particularly women who are progressing in their careers, women who are role models. It's so important as we keep moving the dial and shifting the mindset on how we support women in our profession. Collectively, celebrating and shouting about their successes for all to hear. It's very important that we all take part and recognise the achievements of women in the insurance industry until it just becomes part of the norm that we're actually part of the workforce in general. So many inspiring entries this year. I'm really glad to be you know, part of this process and help uh, recognise some of these women's um, achievement over their career. The um, entrants were all really candid about both their achievements and the challenges they face in, in terms of life being a woman in the UK today. The frankness of the entries and the way that these women were describing their experiences in the industry and sometimes their struggles. And I found that really inspiring and really eye-opening as a man looking at this from this angle for the first time. I would like to thank David Worsfold and all 31 judges who you just heard from for your hard work to get us here today. Thank you to THB Group and all of our events supporters and partners for making this happen. Please do remember to share photos across social media and follow all of the awards action using the hashtag WII Awards across your preferred social media channels. I would now like to hand over to our sponsor, THB Group, to say a few words. I'm Catherine Nicholl. I recently retired from THB after 50 years in the insurance industry, during which time my career spanned broking, underwriting, publicity at Lloyd's, regulation, and then finally 14 years in compliance. I think looking back, what really underpinned my career was an enormous enthusiasm for my work in all the different areas. And I would really say to you that if you haven't got enthusiasm for your job at a particular time, then is the time to move on to something else. Throughout my work, I was always learning, always gaining more information, more knowledge, always meeting more people from all sorts of different areas. And that's I think a very valuable dimension of your career to build. Strangely, the one really important area of your career development, qualifications, is something that completely eluded me. But these days it's absolutely essential. So you really must invest time at the beginning in uh, getting your ACII. But even when that's completed, I would urge you throughout your developing career to continue to acquire new skills, do new, do new courses, obtain new qualifications, because I think that that's what helps you maintain enthusiasm. And I hope that all of you who are just embarking on your careers or still building them will be fortunate enough as I was by the time you come to retire to look back with pride and say I really enjoyed working in an absolutely fantastic industry. I truly believe insurance offers immense scope for everyone and especially now for women. Really, um, there's immense scope. Thank you. We're nearly ready to kick off, but it wouldn't be an awards event without being asked to part with some of your hard earned cash for the sake of a good cause. Today's chosen charity partner is the insurance charities, who do fantastic work helping everyone has and is working within the sector. Hello, I'm Adrienne O'Sullivan, CEO at Arag Legal Protection. I'm also honoured to sit as trustee and director of the insurance charities that have been involved now for almost 20 years. We're delighted to be the chosen charity partner for this year's Women in Insurance Awards. 
It's fantastic to see some familiar faces among the judging panel, some of whom have actively played a part on our committees and indeed the board. Although we are unable to gather together in person, I'm so pleased that we are still able to recognise the wealth of talented women who are working across the insurance industry. Established over 100 years ago, the Insurance Charities is the only charity in the UK and Ireland solely supporting past and present employees in the industry, no matter which role they, they had when they worked with us. We award over 1.7 million annually, and this figure is increasing year on year. We understand adversity can affect anyone. A child with medical needs, a relationship breakdown, mental health issues, domestic abuse, or a debilitating illness. This year has shown us so clearly unforeseen events can turn lives upside down. We support insurance employees and their families in times of need, transforming lives for the better and providing an essential lifeline for as long as it's required. We can help with one-off payments to help finance essential items such as household appliances, school uniforms, care costs and property adaptations and can also provide ongoing financial help where income is restricted or insufficient. We're delighted to be working with other charitable partners including Shelter, Aware and Insurance United Against Dementia to provide specialist and dedicated practical help to our beneficiaries in the UK and Ireland. Dementia is the UK's biggest killer with two in three people living with the condition being women. Through our innovative partnership with the Alzheimer's Society, we support anyone in the industry affected by this disease, whether that is directly or through a loved one. In addition, the partnership offers a range of volunteering opportunities for those that want to give something back to their local community. The COVID pandemic has increased the need for volunteer support even further this year. We've been very grateful to see insurance employees stepping up to offer their precious time in support of those who have been impacted by the crisis most. The sixth strong team at the insurance charities is headed up by Chief Executive Annalie Joy Thornycroft. They understand that many women can face a challenging set of circumstances as they try to balance work and home life, whilst coping with family stresses such as caring for parents. This stress can be compounded as women continue to develop their careers, sometimes working in inflexible working environments, although this is improving, often not remunerated at the same level as their main counterparts. No matter where you are in your career, we are here to support all eligible insurance employees and their families throughout the industry and encourage anyone who is struggling financially to get in touch with us. We'd also like to ask you to share our details with your colleagues and professional networks. We want to make sure no one in need of help misses out. Lastly, we would like to wish all those shortlisted our deepest congratulations for their outstanding nominations. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to watch that. We will remind you later. So enough from me. Today it's all about you. So pour yourselves a generous beverage, have your snacks ready and let the Women in Insurance Awards 2020 begin. Thanks, Katie. What a great awards it's shaping up to be. Let's get started with our first category today. Claims Professional of the Year. Here are the finalists topping the charts. A worthy bunch, I'm sure you'll agree. We have a highly commended in this category that goes to Claire Petz. Here to present this year's winner is Phil Davison from Research in Insurance. Over to you, Phil. The judges said the winner is a very intelligent and determined individual who truly drives change. A rehabilitation champion with a strong work ethic and an excellent range of soft skills, the winner is Stephanie McCann. Congratulations, Stephanie.
Well done, Stephanie. Now we move on to London Market Professional of the Year. Here are the finalists in the spotlight. For the winner, the judges pointed to a long-time committed and successful business leader and business builder in the London market. She's passionate about the insurance profession, a champion of other women and culture change. Congratulations to Kirsten Duffield. Thank you very much Women in Insurance for recognising me in this particular category. The London market has undergone huge changes this year, so thank you very much for recognising us. Well done, Kirsten. Next up, and it's a new category for 2020, Actuary of the Year. Let's see the shortlist. And now for our winner. The judges described her as a ball of energy who is a pioneer for innovation and passionate about improving the client journey and solving business problems. Congratulations to Mahima Agarwal. Well done to you. This time, we're honouring the Team Leader of the Year. Take a look at the finalists on the screen. Our second Highly Commended is awarded to Louise Sharif. This awards winner has a clear vision and strategy that translates into consistent people development. She's achieved success across a wide platform. For her, COVID was an opportunity, not just a crisis demonstrating the potential upside of risk. The winner is Sarah Farden. Well done to you. Team Leader of the Year, thanks very much. Next up, we have Insurance Broker of the Year. Here are the names in the vine for the prize. For this award, the judges were impressed with the way she drives forward broking excellence and sales. She also delivered a Women in Leadership course to encourage and develop other female leaders. Not content with this, she is also involved in attracting new talent to the sector. So, congratulations to Dawn Harley. Well done, Dawn. Let's move right along on to Insurance Lawyer of the Year. Here's the shortlist. In this category, the judges said she demonstrates an outstanding set of achievements with a balanced approach and consideration for others. She has promoted gender diversity across the profession, embedding lasting change. Congratulations to Christine Williams. I am absolutely delighted to receive this award. Thank you very much indeed to everybody who voted for me. And thank you to the organisers of this event. It provides a wonderful, inspirational platform for other women in the industry. Our next category, ladies and gentlemen, is Marketer of the Year. And here are the names topping the bill. The judges debated this category and have awarded highly commended to Hannah Barwell. Congratulations, Hannah. Now, to announce the winner, we have Melissa Collett, the Professional Standards Director of the Chartered Insurance Institute. Over to you, Melissa. Hello, my name is Melissa Collett, and I'm the Professional Standards Director at the Chartered Insurance Institute. The Chartered Insurance Institute is the professional body for insurance and financial planning professionals. I'm delighted to be here today to present the award for Marketer of the Year. Marketing is so important to our sector as it's all about communicating with our customers. So it gives me great pleasure to present this award and I'll read out what the judges have said about the winner. What a professional. Her wide-ranging marketing campaigns are innovative and deliver results. The feedback shows how much she is valued, especially as she has worked tirelessly to open the door to other women. And the winner is Lynn Cuffley from Crawford and Company. 2020 has presented us all with some challenges, so to win this award is absolutely amazing. 
Thank you so much. Thank you, Melissa, and a huge congratulations to Lynn. Thanks for keeping up, folks, as we move to Young Insurance Women of the Year, small to medium firms. Here's the short list, but who triumphed this year? So much talent rising through the ranks, so well done, Rachel Light, for receiving Highly Commended. The judges said this category's winner has embraced the industry, her company and its clients. Innovation is the name of her game, and she has shown real maturity in managing a team older than herself. Congratulations to Abby Sanford. Thank you so much. It really was an honour to be nominated, and it's even better to have won. And uh, what a cause for celebration. Time to pop a bottle. <laughs> Next, we reveal the role model of the year. Here are the all-important finalists. The judges pointed out this category's winner is always leading the way and an advocate for change in the profession. Passionate, clear, and driven with actions that make a real difference. A true role model for all. So congratulations to Maxine Goddard. Hi everyone, I'm so happy to win this award. Thank you so much to IB and the team and all the judges. Um, it's been a fantastic year. Um, I love what I do and you know, as long as I can continue to help others, I'm in the game. Thank you so much and have a great evening. Thank you. Next, we need to find who's claimed top spot for Young Insurance Women of the Year Large Firms. Here are the finalists, but what was the judges' verdict? The winner made a real impact on the judges. Wow! Very impressive in five years with several promotions involved in many market networks. A role model indeed. In addition to all of this, she mentors young women and reverse mentors her COO. Congratulations to Teniola Tijani. <laughs> Thank you so much to everybody who nominated me, to everybody who had a hand in me winning this award. Really, really grateful and hoping to continue this success in the industry. And now to Risk Professional of the Year. Which of these names has their eyes on the prize? For the winner, the judges said she's a genuine high-profile achiever working in a sensitive field. Her contributions to various national and international bodies show she's a genuine industry leader. Congratulations to Jaya Handa. Thanks, Women in Insurance. We quickly pause to remind you not to forget the insurance charities today simply donate via the donation page. Lala. Things can change when you least expect it. life can be ripped apart. We'll be with you. As you pick up the pieces and move forward. For the relatively small things, through a tragic loss. If domestic violence leaves you alone, or essential treatment is many miles away.
If you work in the insurance sector and you or your dependents need help and support, the Insurance Charities is here for you. Thanks for your donations and support. We continue with the awards. Our next rundown is for Underwriting Professional of the Year. The finalist list is on your screens now. The judges describe this person as determined and committed to diversity and development in her business and the wider industry. Merging business is always tough, but she's an example of what a woman can achieve in the industry. Congratulations to Anne Owen. Congratulations to all our winners and highly commended finalists so far. Now it's most inspiring returner and the finalists are on screen now. But what did the judges decide? This award proved to be too difficult and we have two women who have been awarded highly commended. Mojan Spies and Monica Garcia. There can only be one winner, and the judges said she articulated the challenges she faced returning to work and refinding her purpose and focus through challenging roles and giving back to colleagues, clients and industry. Her focus on training, development and mentoring, all while juggling the demands of family life, was truly impressive. Congratulations to Claire Fox. Now we come to our Digital Champion of the Year. These are the finalists. For this category, the judges said the winner's innovative use of technology has gone beyond the usual focus on business efficiency and has improved the quality of life for many injured people who would have otherwise suffered in pain. Congratulations, Deborah Edwards. Amazing, I'm so excited. Thank you very, very much, I really appreciate it. And now we move on to Insurance Women of the Year, small to medium. Please tell us who made the cut. The winner in this category is an outstanding professional with a great career track record, but also has an impressive range of voluntary engagement, both within the insurance market and the broader community. Congratulations, Julie Rayson Flynn. Oh, I just want to say a huge thank you for the award. Uh, feel really privileged. Uh, thank you ever so much. Um, but more importantly, I want to say thank you very much to Cass for nominating me, a member of my team. Cheers, Cass! Congratulations. Our next category is Mentor of the Year, and here are the names in lights. Whose lights is shining brighter than the others? For this category, the judges said the winner has demonstrated industry-level impact in a highly relevant and future-shaping area, delivered through her own brainchild, which helps mentor people not on the radar. Her commitment to mentoring extends to volunteering outside of work. Congratulations, Caroline Bedford. Now we turn our attention to Insurance Women of the Year large firms. Who's your favourite from our finalists? Let's find out who the judges crowned this year. Here we have a highly commended for Maxine Goddard. The judges said the winner in this category, as a business leader, is committed to an inclusive culture and strongly believes in the importance of corporate values directly linked to good business and profitability. She has made it to the top in the traditional blokey part of the market and she is clearly driving real change and making a difference for diversity. She has a great clarity of personal vision and purpose. The winner is Lisa Bartlett. 2020 has been a great year for women in the insurance industry. I was extremely grateful to make the list of finalists, so congratulations to all involved. Thank you so much for the recognition, it really is a great honour. 
Have a great evening, everybody. Cheers. Now for the Rising Star Award. Here are the finalists. The judges felt this individual stood out because there is something different about her. She has overcome some difficult challenges but established herself in the industry. She steps beyond the day job by helping communities and being a role model. A big congratulations to Tasnim Udin. Hello everyone at the Women in Insurance Awards. I am so honoured to be receiving the Rising Star Award this year and I hope that this accolade encourages others to break boundaries into our industry and I hope to continue promoting a more diverse and inclusive environment for us all. Thank you. Unsung Hero of the Year is up next. Let's look at the names. We have a highly commended in this category, which goes to Paulette Francis. To announce this category's winner, we have Catherine Nicholl, who recently retired from her special projects role at THB after having been with the firm for 15 years. Hello. I'm very privileged indeed to have been asked to present this award. The judges said this individual has quietly supported colleagues for over 30 years through all sorts of challenges. She has mentored people through work and personal crises. And last year she worked tirelessly with a group facing redundancy to ensure that every one of them found a new role in the industry. The glowing testimonials show just how valued her support has been. Congratulations to Lynn Wickett. Oh my God, I've won. Thank you. I can't believe it. I'm so excited. Um, I'm so overwhelmed. Um, thank you to all of Mum and Clarence's family. I love you all. Now we come to our award for the Trailblazer of the Year. Individuals vying for the top spots are on the screen. There was a long debate about this category and Highly Commended is awarded to Janthana Kynecrack Hamroy. The judges said the winner in this category stood out because her work is relevant to all women in the UK. She has made an outstanding and vital contribution to improving awareness of the financial resilience gap for women and orchestrating meaningful action for change. What's even more impressive is that she's delivered this incredible groundswell of action while raising a family and developing her career. It is an inspirational nomination. Congratulations, Jane Portas. Congratulations. Let's move on to our final few categories and the first of our two awards for companies. Please find the shortlist on your screen now for contribution to gender inclusion. The judges were bowled over by the winner in this category. For its broad range of initiatives, including a returners programme and a brave choice of some of the topics, including campaigns for menstrual products and menopause awareness and support. Congratulations to LCP. Absolutely delighted to be able to accept this award on behalf of LCP for all the work that they're doing in the diverse team inclusion space. Thanks to everybody who voted and well done to everybody who was shortlisted. Cheers. We come to our penultimate award for contribution to inclusion award. And these are the finalists. The judges said this is a great initiative that's gaining momentum and profile. It has an enthusiastic and committed membership and has established itself as an excellent resource and source of support for people struggling to overcome discrimination and other barriers. Congratulations to Gender Inclusion Network. Hi there, on behalf of the Gender Inclusion Network, I just want to say thank you so much for this award. It means so much to us to receive this recognition. Have a nice evening, everyone. Enjoy your evening.
As we come towards the end of this year's rundown, we reach our final category, which is for Outstanding Achievement Award. And I'd like to hand over to David Worsfold, Chair of Judges, to announce the winner. One of the great privileges of being a judge for the Women in Insurance Awards to review the nominations for the Achievement Award. And this year we had the most amazing range of nominations of women who have inspired others and who have laid a path for others to follow. They deserve an accolade. But there was one that stood out for the judges. By her professionalism and her integrity, she has inspired others. She has laid that path for other women to follow. She's laid firm foundations on which other women can build real success in their careers. And she continues to do that in her current high profile role with the Chartered Insurance Institute. The winner of the Achievement Award of this year's Women in Insurance Awards is Sean Fisher, Chief Executive of the Chartered Insurance Institute. Hello everyone at the Women in Insurance Awards. Thank you so much to the panel judges for awarding me this year's Outstanding Achievement Award. Have a fantastic evening. As we draw to a close, Katie, I'd like to hand back to you. And so we have reached the end of the Women in Insurance Awards 2020. Many congratulations to all of our winners and those recognised with a highly commended accolade. I'd like to say a huge thank you to our team of judges who spent hours pouring through hundreds of nominations. Judging awards like this takes a huge amount of time and we are truly thankful for every judge involved for scoring online and attending the virtual judging day. Thank you as well to all those who helped put this awards together. Our brilliant studio team and incisive team of marketing and events people. And of course, thank you for tuning in and your continued support of this initiative. Please do share the winners with your network and drive this across the market. Take care of yourselves and your loved ones and we hope to see you very, very soon.